Okay, we are live. Oh my goodness, we are live. Let me just fix this here a little bit because as um, you can tell, I'm using my cell phone. I'm not actually using my vlogging camera. The other thing too is that I'm a little nervous about the fact that my lighting is not that great, but we're gonna keep it positive, right? Let's keep it positive. Uh, what do you think of my glasses? Let my glasses. I don't know if it showed up in the thumbnail, but I'm going to put it on. Yes. <laughs> Silly me, right? Silly me. Okay, so for real, for real, for real. Get serious, Habiba. AKA Dr. Tanao to some, right? All right, so I'm going to do this video live. This is only my... Uh, second, literally second, or really first real live video on YouTube. And so I'm a little bit nervous because unlike the, you know, regular videos that I upload where I get to edit and take out all the silly bits, this is actually me in my home office. So somebody's on here, I believe. Let's see. Uh, Mary, I love your glasses. Thank you, Mary. Okay, I'm not gonna touch that anymore. I'm gonna leave it right there. Leave it right there, right? That's distracting otherwise. All right, so if you are new here on my channel, you are on Kenton and Habiba and welcome. My name is Habiba and I am a physician and entrepreneur, entrepreneur. <laughs> and I make YouTube videos. Uh, family lifestyle videos and videos about cooking, traveling, food, all that good stuff. So hopefully when you come on this channel, you are, you feel joy, you feel love, you feel a sense of family. And I love all of you guys. And I really appreciate all of you guys for watching. Anyway, I'm going to adjust this a little bit because I feel like it's cutting off my head. Let me just fix this. So why are we here today? What was the point of this live video? Well, the point of this live video is I wanted to share with you my vision board, which I did here. Can you hear me well? I hope you can hear me well, because I'm going to talk really loud. So this is it, my 2020 vision board. And we're going to go through in detail what all that chaos is that I'm showing you. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to see or make sure we have an understanding of what I believe a vision board is. So first of all, I would say that a vision board is just a visual depiction of your dreams, of your goals, of your wishes. Um, however, it does not work if you don't work, right? It doesn't work if you don't work. So I've seen people do these vision parties, which are cute, and they get pieces of magazines and cutouts, and everybody just glues it on, and everybody's having a good old time. And yeah, that's cute and everything, but I honestly believe that a vision board should be something very, very personal and very serious. So you have set your mind down to things that you want to accomplish for the year or for, you know, the future. And so you're very serious about it. And it's not just about looking good. It's not just about um, getting your friends to look at it and be like, oh, that's so cute. That's so nice. That's so creative. No, we're going to take this seriously, right? So everything that we put on the vision board is with intention. These are not just wishes, but these are attainable goals that we wish to achieve. So we have set a specific timeline when we plan to do these things and we have taken ourselves seriously and we're willing to do the work to get it done. So I'm not a big, um, what is it? New Year's resolutions type of person. I've done that in the past and we put these lofty ideas and then you feel disappointed you know, after the first month when you don't achieve all of those things or most of those things that you set out to do. So I, I usually journal and actually I've been journaling for most of my life, right? So I thought back at when I was young and my mom and I used to have tons of journals. Here's one, for example, like I constantly have journals. Some of them are just notebooks. Some are literally just hardcore, uh, had hardcover books. And I will write down lists of things I want to do during the day, things of things I want to do during the week, 
things of things I want to do over the next six months. So I've had, um, you know, I've been doing that historically. I've been doing that, but this is probably the first time in a long time that I'm actually cutting out pictures or Googling images and putting them along with quotes and meaningful words uh, to give myself a visual depiction of what I want to do. I wanted to show you, let's see, I wanted to show you this board that I have before we go to the vision board. So I'm going to pick you up a little bit, okay? Move you a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so I'm in my home office, and let's see, I'm gonna go like that. So you can see um, in behind me, I have a dry erase board, and this is where I actually will list all of my YouTube video ideas that I have for the next week or so. Maybe this actually would represent probably two to three weeks, because when you're doing YouTube and you wanna be successful, which is another video I will do at a later time. You need to have, you know, good ideas or content that you wish to put up. Um, and then here, I actually have this blackboard. This here blackboard is literally a door. And I got this from um, a thrift shop. I think it was Habitat for Humanity, literally for five dollars i swear you to you it was five dollars and i just painted it so it's a painted board and you can see it's just leaning on this wall and i've used this in my kitchen to put recipes on it i've used this here as a list and so i was thinking of using this as the vision board but the issue was that i like this more for things that i'm going to write and then erase so it, it's perfect because i love to write i love to write chalk you know i grew up uh, i went to secondary school in um, nigeria so i was used to a chalkboard and now they used to a lot you know more modern technology but i like the idea of writing and erasing so you can see these are some basic things i told myself i needed to do clear up the office finalize a speech blog post stuff like that laundry okay so you got the picture let's go back to this vision board um yeah i so said i'm in my office so you can see and I cleared it up. I was on Instagram showing what a mess it was, but I'll give you a formal uh, office tour soon. So let's put you back down and I'll show you the vision board right here. I hope you can see me. So hello, and if you're watching, say hi, even though I honestly can't see the comments right now. I can't see them the way my phone is set up, but definitely say hi. And when I come back um, or I go over the video, hi, <laughs> Glandon, who's that? So it's hi. Yeah, I'll come back and I'll respond. Okay, so let's get this vision board. And so I'm hoping that not only do I inspire myself, that I inspire you. Okay, so let's get it out. Big board, big poster board I decided to use. And we'll start at the top. So the first thing, hopefully, that you can see right here, we're going to start right up. Well, let's move it up a little bit. First thing you can see here is I have a picture of a doctor and a patient, an older patient. Hopefully, I'll live long enough to be that old patient, but it's an old guy, right? And then you see here, this is a nurse or medical provider, pretty pleasant looking medical provider. And I have a sign here that says cancer screening. Um, really, the purpose of this was to remind me this year to really make my health a focus. A lot of times, healthcare providers uh, don't make the time to take care of themselves. And there are a ton of, well, cancer screening tests and health maintenance tests that we need to do just like everybody else, right? And so I'm actually thinking of doing a video about these health maintenance tests. Things like, you know, your mammogram, your pap, um, going to see the dentist, going to see the eye doctor, and what the appropriate age is to do those things. When is your colonoscopy due? Things like that. So that's what I'm putting down because last year I wasn't very good at getting it done. But so far I have to say I have already had my mammogram this year. So ladies and gents, take care of yourself. The second big portion here you will see I have is about weight loss. I am so tired of this subject, you guys. I'm so tired of this. We, but we got to get it done. We got to get it done. 
<laughs> so as much as I don't mind being plus size, I honestly, given my height, would prefer to be a lot lighter. And I'm sure you guys um, can relate or some of you can relate. So what I have here is a picture of some salmon because salmon is one of the superfoods. So it's not really just about you know, eating less. It's also about what you're eating and eating more of the good stuff, right? So I also have a blender here with some fruit because I would like to start juicing a little bit more. I do have a juicer and you would think I would pull it out, but I used to think it was so much work taking it out. It was so messy. Can you relate? Well, anyway, if we are going to prioritize our health, we need to start eating more fruits and vegetables. Um, I have this picture, uh, picture of Megan Good. I don't know if you guys could see that picture. She, I mean, she's got a totally different body than me. I don't even know why I put that up there, but I honestly feel like that picture or her pose just motivates me to feel like I can get to be a little healthier. I can get that muscle tone going, right? Um, Anyway, the other dream I have for myself or goal I have for myself is to start running. I don't know about you guys, right? But I always have this like dream or sensation that I'm running or that I need to start running because running is not only obviously great cardio, but it's a great way to lose weight. Um, so I'm trying to kind of psych myself into uh, this idea that running would be a good solution for me. And again, I apologize if you guys are leaving comments right now, I can't see it, but I promise I will respond to everybody. So definitely leave me your comments and um, yeah, or suggestions if you have any. Okay, in this picture, it's a bunch of women doing aerobics. And in the middle here, I have a, a little piece that says 168.5 pounds. Can you believe that is the average weight of an American woman right now? So this has gone up and partly because there are a lot more plus size women in the US nowadays. So the average weight of an American woman has gone up. What's sad is your girl is about 30 pounds above that average weight. That is not good. So I would like to be 168 pounds. That is my goal to hit 168 pounds this year. So not obese, not overweight, but just average weight, again, given my height. Okay, so it says, you know the feeling when you actually wake up early to go to the gym. Another challenge I have is that I tend to stay up super late, and staying up late um, is not always a good thing, even though I feel like I'm productive because I get a lot of my work done while everybody else is sleeping, but the challenge or problem with that is when you're up late, you tend to eat late. You tend to be less set. Uh, you tend to be more sedentary. So you're eating more. You're staying up late, and it just messes with your rhythm, and you gain weight. So it also becomes an excuse not to work out. So that's what I'm going to try to work on. Um, let's see. And then staying on this side. Okay, let me move up here. Staying on this side. I also have pictures of vacations I would like to take. So places I would like to go. Um, there are many places in the South that are really nice, like Charleston. And the reason I would like to go there is because they have some of the best foods. <laughs> the South has some of the best foods. So even though I would like to go somewhere internationally, I also would like to go somewhere locally within the US, places that I haven't been. So that's the go. Of course, like everybody else, we need to make money, right? Everybody, there's nothing wrong with saying you want to make more money, okay? But it's too vague. The idea of just saying, I want to make more money, everybody has that, right? So we need to stop and be very specific. How are we going to make more money? How are we going to save more money? How are we going to cut back on our debt? We need to get a little bit more clarity, more vision, more goals, more discipline. Um, 
so yeah, I'm not, I didn't put down my goal amount because I feel like that's super personal and everybody has that number or should have a number in their head, how much more money they want to make this year and how. Um, so I will add that later. Okay. And then let's go here to entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. You will see I have on the top boss. Um, I mean, I really don't need that constant reminder. I know I'm a boss. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's how I feel. That's what I believe. I don't need that up there. But there are times where we're going to feel bad about ourselves. We're going to feel down. And sometimes we just need that affirmation to lift us up, right? And one major boss that I look up to like millions of women out there is Oprah. So Oprah will always be on my vision board. Um, this here picture is a picture of Tyra Banks. And it's not even the picture that I like. It's what it says underneath. It says, um, Banks proves that where you start your career doesn't have to be where you end it. And that just really resonates with me. Where you start your career doesn't mean that's where you have to end it. So just because you were trained as a teacher or a doctor or a nurse or uh, a pharmacist or whatever, or uh, you work at McDonald's even, that doesn't mean that that's because that's where you started, that's where you're gonna end. You can reinvent yourself. We live in a new world where people should be allowed to reinvent themselves. And that's what I feel like I am going through. So this is why I have here, create your way. And then on top here, I also thought about motivate and inspire, i.e., what do you want to be remembered for? When I stop and I think about myself, when I stop and I think about the channel, what do I want people to get out of the channel? I want them to feel joy. I want them to feel a sense of creativity fearlessness and love. So those are the main words I would say would describe not just me, but also describe the channel. And then focusing that you are your own brand. Along with that, create your own way. I think focusing on the fact that um, you want to really think about intentionally what you're putting out into the world. It's not just good enough to say, yeah, I got a YouTube channel. Yeah, I got a blog. Yeah, I do this. I do that. But again, what is it that you're putting out? What do you want people to know you uh, know about you? When they think of Dr. Tunao, or maybe most people will just think of Habiba, or they think of Kenton and Habiba, I want them to, you know, think about these values that I have put out. So again, focusing on branding and what you're putting out. This here is just my old business card, which needs to be updated. So that's why it's here. It's just to remind me that I need to get new business cards. And the thing about business cards is nowadays they seem almost obsolete or as if they're not necessary in this new uh, digital world that we live in, right? Because people can look you up without a business card. But I think it's still important when you're meeting people um, to be able to hand out a business card every now and then. And you have, you know, I have business cards that are appropriate as a physician when I'm in that world. And then there are business cards that I have when I'm in the social media world, right? Okay, so, and then I have this here. Let's move up. Um, as an entrepreneur, what is it that I wish to achieve? How is it that I may want to make more money? You know, what way specifically? Number one, public speaking. Okay, so how many of you knew <laughs> that I want to be a public speaker? Probably most people don't know. Um, and this is what I realized that sometimes we have these ideas in our head, but we don't share them. So we get frustrated, like how come nobody is hiring me as a public speaker? Well, honey, you have not told anybody. You have not shared this with anybody. So now I'm sharing it with you guys because I want to be held accountable. You know, I really want to be held accountable and not just keep these ideas in my head. Uh, now, why public speaking? Well, actually, obviously, you can tell I don't mind being in front of the camera. I don't mind talking to a lot of people. But honestly, um, going far back as high school, college, I did public speaking. Um, I used to get called upon to 
go on stage to moderate uh, debates and also um, even going, um, thinking about med school, I actually for graduation was one of the speakers at the Citadel um, in front of people. So that felt amazing. Then I think back at uh, private practice where I was a panelist there. And so I've done some public speaking for women's health events. And so I wanna get back to doing that, but a little bit more on a professional level now. And so that's why that is up. So she, obviously you could tell she's speaking at the Essence Fair. Um, I'm not sure that that's my goal at this point. <laughs> I, I just wanna be able to speak about medicine or health. So things like diabetes or hypertension, things like that, those are things I'm comfortable with. I also don't mind talking about um, health screening tests, you know, things like what, again, screening tests you need, like the mammogram, the pap, and all those things, even PSAs, prostate exams, you know, whether you're male or female, um, going out into the community to do that. I don't mind doing motivational speeches. So motivational speeches, not just, um, about getting your life, you know, but basically about career, uh, if you want to pursue medicine, or even if you didn't want to pursue medicine, um, just getting your life together. Uh, let's see, what else? I would also be comfortable, of course, talking about my story as an immigrant, as an African-American woman, um, as a person who has been educated in predominantly white settings, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but also social media. This is another subject I really enjoy talking about, you know, how um, I have grown on social media, why I've grown on social media, some tips, um, the struggle, um, things like that. So I'm just putting it out there, you know, putting it out there so that when I start doing things, you guys are not surprised and or again, I'm asking you to hold me accountable. Um, and I'm hoping that putting this out there means that, you know, uh, these dreams that I have, these goals that I have will come true, not only because I'm working hard for them, but because some of you might actually be willing to help me reach these goals, right? Amen. Um, let's see, what else? Be you, be strong. I think the biggest lesson that I would have for anybody, no matter what you're doing, is to be authentic. Um, I can't stand when I see people trying to copy other people because you cannot be them. It gets tiring. You can only be you. You know, be memorable as yourself. Don't try to copy or try to be better than somebody else. Be better than yesterday's version of yourself. That's what you need to be better at. Be better at last month's version of yourself. Stop worrying about whether you fit in. Stop worrying about, you know, how you sound, how you look compared to, you know, those people around you because what's cool today may not be cool tomorrow, right? So while you're busy chasing uh, fads or chasing trends, you're missing out on an opportunity to make yourself better. So I'm constantly, um, you know, reminding not just really myself, because at this point at my age, I don't have to, but reminding my children also just to be better versions of themselves and to feel comfortable. You're not going to be everybody's cup of tea, right? You're not everybody's going to love you and that's okay. But as they say, your vibe finds your tribe right? Depending on what kind of energy you put out or what kind of values you put out, that's the kind of people you're going to attract. So I am very happy and comfortable with the uh, tribe of friends that I have made here on YouTube or on social media. And I really love all of you guys and all your positive comments and how you uplift Kenton and I on this channel. So anyway, I don't know how I got to that point, but so that's why you will see this here representing social media. So I need to do better this year with what I do on social media. I mean, I'm being very intentional when it comes to YouTube because what I found is that it's very difficult to spread yourself on so many different platforms. For those of you that have a Facebook or an Instagram or Pinterest uh, you know, page, you understand that it's really a challenge. Um, 
to be all over the place. So you find that you're so diluted in all these different places when you could have concentrated your energy into one place. And once you build that up to a point that you would like, then you move on to the others. Um, so for me, my focus has been YouTube, but I also would like to be able to get back on my blog. Um, I do have a blog, habibatunowmd.com. Hopefully you have checked it out. I, I keep promising I'm going to start putting more content on there. Um, I have thought of my blog as a place where I could have an open diary. I could talk about, you know, some of these things, medicine, but also my life um, and my life growing up in Nigeria, because there were a lot of things on the video that I did with my father that I could not really talk about or share. And I thought, well, um, trying to respect his privacy, I did not show a lot of things, but I feel like I should be able to write it and share it from my point of view, because that was my truth. And so I really want to get back to doing that. Um, and also motivating young people on the blog, regardless of your interest or career. Okay, so then the other part of my entrepreneur journey is that my goal is to write that book. I'm sure there are some of you here that have written a book or are potential future authors. Write that book. <laughs> I have several ideas for writing a book. Um, I may not share them really in detail here. I just want to put it out first. So I will say, though, the first book, because I'm going to use it as a trial, the first book is going to be a children's book, um, a children's book slash doll collector's interested book. And you're probably like, here you are talking all this seriousness. You're a physician. Why would you want to do a children's book? Well, a lot of people do children's book. There are a lot of Look, like I was just reading recently, watching Sotomayor, the just uh, the judge uh, who uh, is a very serious person who has written a children's book. So there are a lot of people who aspire um, to motivate younger people. And so that's what I want to do first. Then I'll write the other books that are more serious. But, you know, I got to get my feet wet first. Right. And then this picture here is just to motivate myself to collaborate more with brands and also um, basically businesses and interesting people. And I'm saying collaborate, but more intentionally, uh, as in collaborate with people who share the same values, who share the same work ethic. Um, because if you're an entrepreneur, you know, there are a lot of people who will want to jump on the bag and with you. But they don't share the same vision or they don't share the, shame, the same work ethic. And so I'm going to be very intentional uh, with who I align myself with. Um, and sometimes it's not also because I think, you know, um, you know, they don't have the same work ethic. Sometimes you also want to make sure that, um, again, that they are aligned with whatever your brand is. So, for example, you may not see me you know, doing something with a swimsuit brand or something like that, or, or someone who exclusively just does, um, I don't know, um, sportswear or something, because that's just not, that's just not me, right? Um, my brand tends to be a little bit more about not just family, but food, lifestyle, stuff like that. Uh, also motivation and maybe, like I said, health. So, the other thing, too, which I did not mention, I was going to put, ah, I had a mini stethoscope. I have a mini stethoscope here. Hold on one second. I was going to, ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, here's my mini stethoscope. Can you see that? <laughs> so this I was going to stick up here. This belongs to my doll. What's the point of this? So the point of this is that this is something that has been bothering me for a while is that when I work in medicine or when I am seeing patients as a physician, I tend not to talk about what I do on social media because I feel like it's A, not professional, but B, really because I'm afraid of judgment and a lot of the physicians or healthcare workers tend to find what I do on social media as a little strange or weird. You know, you get the questions like, why would you share your life on YouTube? Like that just seems 
so invasive. I think, you know, most physicians, if you think of your own doctor, how much do you know about your doctor's private life? Probably nothing, right? Um, and usually when you go to see your physician, your physician's job is to focus on getting to know you. You know, we ask a lot of questions. What are your symptoms? What is this? What is that? So our job is focused on getting to know you. It's really not about you getting to know us in that much detail. So I've always felt like it just wasn't the space to discuss social media. And therefore, I just hardly brought it up um, to any physicians unless they really, really knew me and I felt incredibly comfortable. Um, and then the flip is when I am doing social media, I realized that I wasn't talking about medicine. I wasn't talking about health. I wasn't talking about, you know, diabetes or hypertension or how not to get the flu or vaccines you need or things like that, because I felt like they were two completely different worlds. So my objective this year is to see how I can kind of combine the two and how I can monetize, you know, my training and my gifts and be comfortable discussing both in the same in the same light. So, you know, they're not basically they are different parts of my life, but yet I am the same person, right? I shouldn't have to segment everything into these little chopping boards. So I'm going to try my best this year on YouTube to start putting in a little bit more health-related content, you know, basically teaching some of you or sharing some, you know, medical facts or medical knowledge that I have because what a waste, right? I mean, just because I'm a physician um, who chooses to have this sort of social fun, um, you know, initially was just a hobby, but now honestly, YouTube has become a big part of me and has become a source of a source of income, if you will. So anyway, look out for more medical related content. Uh, let's see what else have I covered everything? Oh, okay, so this picture here, this picture here is what I call a vibe. It is to remind me to wear a little bit more color, bright colors. And also it just reminds me of royalty and a sense of regal, you know, regal black women um, that are not only pretty, pretty, but also powerful. And that's the thing. I think if you work in corporate America, a lot of times you feel as a female that you can't be strong, you can't be a boss without somebody saying you're a bitch or something. And for me, it's important to know that I can be feminine and still be powerful. Um, I can still, you know, love being a woman and love being feminine and love wearing glam clothes if I so please and still be smart and still be powerful. So that's what I strive to do a little bit more. But I also just love Naomi Campbell, straight up. And then the picture over here is a woman with natural hair. And that's because um, y'all may know or not know that my hair has been whoops oops sorry my hair has been natural um since since literally july so i have not relaxed my hair in several months so it has grown out what you see here is that i've gelled it down but the ends are relaxed so at some point you're gonna see me wearing some protective styles hopefully some crochet braids um, I might wear a weave or two, I don't know, but I'll probably also wear my natural hair. And my goal is usually my hair will get to this length in about mm, two years, two to three years, my hair gets to about this length. And if you look back, you'll see I have a hair channel, Hair by Habiba, which I haven't been uploading to. Uh, it's out there and uh, it's got a lot of natural hair videos that I made years ago. But I think I also have a playlist here where I uploaded um, some hair videos. So that's what that is about. Oh, this quote, I gotta read to you. See that quote? It says, she is clothed in strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. So two key words, strength, dignity, and without fear of the future. So 
I'm sure if you've seen my hobbies video, you will see that I discussed uh, suffering from significant anxiety. And a lot of my anxiety also comes from fears. Um, it's, I know it's surprising to some people that, oh, she's a doctor who seems to be incredibly confident, but yes, I also really suffer from significant anxiety. Um, and I think a lot of the things that hold me back, like many of you is fear. Uh, I think, um, having gone through certain traumatic things as a child, I tend to carry this sort of level of intense fear, um, over the years that I constantly try to manage. Uh, and it can be very disabling. Uh, and so I am trying to focus this year on gratitude and focusing on what I am grateful for, what I am happy, what I'm blessed to have instead of the fear. Because honestly, yeah, fear will hold you back. And you have to look back in your life and realize how many things you've accomplished and how many, how far you've come and how you didn't die. And here you still are standing strong. Um, and so that's going to be a lot of what I tell myself this year. Um, so actually let's talk about a little win. A little win this year is the fact that, or yeah, last year, I should say 2019. Uh, let me give you a little recap. So 2019, at least on YouTube, started with me having less than 5,000 subscribers. So, you know, I, and I say that because there are times where I'm thinking about how oh, slow the channel is moving and it really shouldn't be about numbers. It really should be the fact that I have you guys who are super dedicated and, um, you know, so positive and uplifting. It's really about you guys. But sometimes we do think about the numbers and I and I sit there and I think, oh, if only I could move a little faster, which reminds me, don't forget to thumbs up, right? Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe if you've been watching for a while. But anyway, um, just a reminder to myself is the fact that we started with less than 5,000 subscribers in the beginning of 2019. And by the end of 2019, you see we have a community of over 20,000 subscribers. So I think that's pretty significant. So my goal, which oh, I didn't mention here, is that I would like us to be a community of about 50,000 subscribers this year. So if you can help, if you can help, if you've been watching us, and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and mash that subscribe button. Please, please, please. That would mean so much to me. But anyway, yeah, so I got to think about some of these goals that I have, you know, achieved. Um, obviously, thanks to you, thanks to the family. And what I did mention here, which reminds me, family. This is an old picture, by the way, of Kenton and I and the kids in Laurenburg. That was about 10 years ago. As you can see, I am wearing a ridiculous lime colored wig. And the reason was that was actually on Halloween. Okay. But it also happened to be um, a day where Kenton had won city council. So when we moved to that small town, uh, we saw so many things that needed to get done. There were so many things, programs that needed to be done and things that we thought we could do to help. And Kenton decided he wanted to run for, um, you know, office. He wanted to be on city council. Now, I don't know anything about politics. I never really, it wasn't enough, not my thing, but Kenton was definitely very interested in politics. And so I became his campaign manager because even though I don't know a lot about politics, I do know a lot about people, right? And making relationships with people. And in small towns, uh, one big thing is the church. You have to be able to connect with people in the church. So I would basically push him to go to these small churches, um, to go to these meetings. And, you know, as you know, Kenton's not necessarily the most outgoing or 
people person. I mean, one-on-one, -on -one, he's really good, but he really isn't one to go into a crowd. So we would do a lot of that. We bought t-shirts. Uh, we had to do the whole signs. We had to do the whole campaigning. And so I just look back at this and I think that as a family, you know, when you put your mind to something, you can do it. You can do it with hard work, perseverance, you can do it. So anyway, I look back at that and I think about this year, our goals for this year. For Kenton, as you know, he is um, in law school doing his first year. And I feel like my role as his spouse is to make sure that I provide a very supportive environment. You know, because there are times he's coming home, he's super stressed. Um, yeah, he's super stressed. He needs somebody to vent to. And so it is my goal or my job or my wish to be supportive. And sometimes when I can try to make sure he has a healthy um, meal. Uh, Khalid, the oldest, who you see right here, there's Khalid in the middle. Right, that's Khalid. Uh, he is a junior in high school high school and college. And so next year, he should be finishing his senior year in college. Kareem will be finishing his sophomore year uh, next year. So he's finishing his freshman year this year. And Mariam next year, oh my goodness. I keep saying next year. Mariam this year is a high school senior. So this year we will become empty nesters. So obviously, as parents, our goal is to be supportive to our children. And so I'm hoping Mariam goes to the dream or her dream college or whatever that is, or wherever God thinks is appropriate for her. I hope that she makes it to college and I hope she is willing to go to prom. Many of you guys want her to go to prom. I want her to go to prom. I'm whispering because I'm wondering whether she can hear me because she's downstairs but uh, we really would like her to go to prom. And so anyway, we are raising leaders because we feel that we are leaders in our community. And so we are doing our best to make sure that we are raising young leaders too. And so that was my 2020 goal. Hopefully it wasn't too chaotic or vision board. Um, and again, you know, your vision board doesn't work unless you do. It's not about the cute pictures or the little signs. It really isn't about that. Um, you need um, basically a visual uh, sign or look at what it is that you want to achieve. I'm sure you have something that you would like to do or achieve this year. And I encourage you to put it out there. I encourage you to leave a note if you are so inclined about whatever it is that you think is holding you back. Um, you know, none of us are perfect. We all make excuses. We all find reasons not to do what we need, what we need to do. Um, but I hope that somehow this board that I've shared with you is a little bit of an inspiration or motivation. Um, I'm definitely going to start sharing a little bit more uh, or being a little bit more vulnerable here on YouTube because honestly, there are many things that I wanted to share um, that I haven't, uh, again, for fear of judgment. And so I'm going to let that go because you know what? Again, none of us are perfect and you cannot help people and help yourself if you're not willing to be honest and open sometimes. Um, and so that's what I'm hoping to do this year. So I really hope that you guys will be here for the journey. I am sure this year is going to be interesting and I'm going to continue to put out hopefully meaningful content that inspires, that brings you joy and that helps motivate you. So I just want to say goodbye. And I, I don't even know how long I've been on here because I was trying to keep it on for 20 minutes or less, but I'm sure knowing me, I've been on here longer. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching and God bless. Now let's figure out how we turn this off, right? Oh, leave me your comments. Oh, leave me your comments below. I will check them and I will respond. I promise. Okay. So how we do this, we don't know how to do this, but we're going to figure it out.